All right, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the World's Prep. Um, today we got heavy bench. This is the last heavy bench, RP seven to eight single, which again, RP seven to eight is the heaviest or like the the hardest that Joey programs for me. So, I'm gonna be pretty heavy today. Um, I'm kind of taking a while to get going. I'm on my second ghost energy drink because I ran out of pre, so trying to get that 400 milligrams in. Warming up really slow, allowing this caffeine to hit me. Um, but feeling all right, feeling strong. We'll see what we got today. Hopefully, I'm hoping for at least anywhere from like 220 to like 225, so we'll see. Things slowly getting better as I warm up. It's taking me a while to get like energy, I don't know. I got some pop off the chest. Same as last week, same as last session. Pecs are like sore, but the pop's there, so it's gonna keep slowly working up. Hopefully this caffeine starts hitting a little harder as I as I get heavier. Not feeling great, but I mean, I know it was fast. I could tell the bar speed was fast. It just doesn't feel that good. So I'm gonna jump 10 keys. Um, that could be like last, that could be like top set, or that could be like second to last warm up. I really don't know at this point, uh, but we'll start figuring out as we, as we keep going up. Pretty good. I thought it was gonna be a lot harder than that. It felt the same as the last one. Yeah. Cool. Dang, I should have just fucking loaded 500. <laughs> Hit that 222 for the top single. I uh, was really tempted. I thought about it for like five minutes to go up to 227 or 501. Um, it was definitely there, but I just felt like, again, not worth it. Just like yesterday, not worth it. My body's kind of forcing me into like being more disciplined with my RP, especially on squat and deadlift. And then I'm kind of just following that trend on bench too and just trying to be as smart as possible. Um, that 222 gives us a good idea of exactly where we're gonna be at for meet day. So then it's like, what's the point of going up five kilo and hitting 501 uh, besides like a nice IG video and a nice YouTube thumbnail. So decided to keep it there, getting this back down working, um, staying healthy. My pecs actually feel really good today. Like a huge 180 from yesterday when they felt like shit. So good day so far. All right, y'all, successful bench day. Um, ended with that 490, only five kilos under my all-time best. Um, I feel like the control was much better than when I hit that 501, and I feel like the pause was a lot better than when I hit the 501. So both of those things should transfer more to the platform than when I actually when I hit my all-time best, I think this will transfer better and I might end up being stronger in the meet. That's at least what I'm thinking in my head. So feeling really good about bench. Um, I had an idea for this video and I was gonna do like, I was gonna try to bench 501 today and then I was gonna do like how I hit, how I bench 500 pounds. That was gonna be like the uh, title of this video. And then obviously I didn't bench 500 pounds today, but I have. So I'm gonna do the video anyways and I'm gonna just give you all the, the couple of tips or the couple of things that I think took me from like a mid fours bench from a mid fours bench pressure to like a 500 bench pressure. So obviously some of the like things that can go unsaid is like I gained a lot of weight and a lot of muscle over time, right? I've been training for 12 years. I started training and I was like 110 pounds and now I weigh 240 pounds. So obviously that's like one of the big factors, right? Just training um, consistently over 12 years, that's a huge factor. But I'm more talking about like what took me from that mid fours to the 500. So the first thing I did, me and Joey did was um, I used to bench three days a week and I did that for a long time and that got me pretty strong. That got me up to like the mid fours to about 450-ish bench. 
and we milked that dry. We milked it for everything that it could give me. Um, and then I had to increase frequency, right? So I went from three to four bench days. I am someone with the, uh, sh on the shorter side, my ROM's on the shorter side, so I can handle that fourth day. And that propelled me from like mid fours to like upper fours. I'm not saying that's the move for everybody, right? Like this is just what, what worked for me. You kind of have to assess your training, see how you're feeling coming into bench days. Um, are you too cooked? Are you like feeling like super fresh every time you come bench? Are you, are you getting stronger? Like all those things matter, right? If you're already getting stronger on three bench days, then like why stop doing what you're doing? And also if you're like coming in super cooked, then you gotta address that first. Either you gotta pull the intensity back, you gotta pull the volume back on those days. Um, you gotta be more strict with your RPE. And then if you're still not making progress on three days, then you can maybe look into going to four days. And then even for some really big dudes or like bigger dudes, you might need two days, right? So it just really depends on the person. But what worked for me was going from that three days to that four days uh, frequency for bench press. The second thing I did was I, I changed from like a traditional, and when I say traditional, I mean just like a bro bench grip, like where you're just gri gripping the bar however, a little bit higher in the palm. And I switched to a bulldog grip, right? And this is not like some revolutionary thing. Like everybody already knows this. Everybody already does this. But just for me, it just made such a big difference in how stacked my joints were, how stacked my elbow was underneath my wrist, um, how efficient I felt. I felt like I can push more. I could grind through that midpoint where I used to get stuck. I can like grind through it now. So that just took my bench to a whole nother level. And those, th those two things together is what got me from a 450 up to like a 500 bench, right? I've hit 501 one time. I've hit... 490 uh, multiple times i hit 490 in comp i think those two things the bulldog grip will 100 percent i i think help every single person like if you're not already doing bulldog grip uh i would switch right now and learn it even if it takes you a few weeks to like get the technique down or a few months even to get the technique down for like all my guys that i switched to bulldog grip that got the technique correct um their bench has improved so i would definitely recommend that um, some people really exaggerate it into like the jab grip and then they get that super wide grip um, I don't think that's necessary for everybody. It's just a slight internal rotation of the palm of the hands um, Fingers kind of facing towards each other have that bar sitting diagonal through the palm and then pushing through the that Lower outer part of your palm a couple things that help with this is when you unrack Don't squeeze down on the bar kind of just let let your wrist extend a little bit and let that bar sit in that lower palm And like the heel of your palm then once you bring the weight out then you squeeze those fingers down, then you squeeze that pinky down, and then you really drill that bar into position where it's supposed to be in your hand, and then that's just locked in at that point. Um, the elbows are gonna flare a little bit more. People get worried, like, not like experienced powerlifters, but some like novice or like new people, especially like if you come from football, get worried about your elbows flaring. There's nothing wrong with some elbow flare, especially if it's putting that elbow out underneath the wrist where it's supposed to be, right? So. I'll probably do another video like just teaching bulldog grip and how I do it because this is like obviously I'm in the car I can't really demonstrate on the bar but those are the two things that got me from the mid fours to the 500 bench think about it think about your training see if it's the right move for you see what you need to do um, obviously you got to get jacked especially if you have any type of ROM if you don't have like a two inch ROM you got to get jacked to get a bigger bench like you have to be muscular if you're not muscular, like, you know, how are you going to move the weight? You know what I mean? So, obviously, some of that's going to come from benching. Sometimes people need to push their accessories more um, to get that muscle. I did. I pushed accessories for years and years and years when I was more in a bodybuilding uh, mindset of training. And I definitely think that carried over to when I just started being really, really specific with bench. So, if you're, like, a really young powerlifter and you're not muscular and you're not jacked, then, like, you should focus on getting jacked as well. So, that's really all I got. I hope those things make sense. I hope maybe y'all could take something from that and use it. That's all I got for this video. Really happy with how bench went. Excited to get to this meet. Put up a 501 bench if it's there. Hopefully, maybe 496. Maybe I just want a nice little PR on bench. Support links down in the bio if y'all want to order a big body shirt or if y'all want to order um, some supplements or coaching from me. Go ahead and hit the link in the bio. That's all I got for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one. I'm out.